This video contains violent and disturbing content. Viewer discretion is advised. Three days ago, Tina Rosenberg was reported missing, along with her boyfriend and younger sister. Her boyfriend, Jack Stryker, wanted to take Tina on a South Coast road trip for her 20th birthday. Flora Rosenberg, the younger sister of Tina, was also invited on this road trip. Jack. Tina. Flora. Jack's car was found two days ago in the woods. There were signs of struggle inside the car. There was also a painting. Flower Face Flora. After searching the car, police heard screaming from deeper within the woods. Police followed the screams until they found a grisly sight. Tina was found tied to a tree with her feet and arms cut off. She was still alive and conscious. The mutilated corpse of Flora Rosenberg could also be located. Her head had been smashed in with a hammer. Tina told the police that the murderer was still around somewhere. However, no one could be found. After escorting Tina from the scene, the police returned to the car and found another painting. The painting had just been put there. The title, Long Jack, hastily written on the back. This is the painting. Jack has still not been found. In Tina's own words, this is what happened that night. I remember waking up in the car. Jack was gone, and I could hear someone approaching. Next thing I remember, I, I was tied to that tree. I was injected with something. I could hear my sister screaming. She was screaming for our mom. Oh, Flora. I don't know. I remember whispering in her face. Oh, God. Her face. This is a police sketch of the murderer based on Tina's description. Holy shit! This is the first victim that our killer has left alive. Real quick, if you haven't seen my first video about the analog horror series from Urban Spook covering the video's faces in the walls, the clue, and the lighthouse, go check it out and the original videos because this will be confusing without context. If you're not gonna do that because you suck, here's an oversimplified rundown. A serial killer has been murdering people and documenting his crimes using paintings and photography as a medium. He has continued to do this even when his investigation was publicized and gained media attention, and began to toy with, and even murder the people investigating him. As it stands, he is still an active killer, and there are many paintings out there depicting victims that are unaccounted for. Got it? Good! While some might state that leaving a witness suggests that our killer is getting overconfident and perhaps a bit sloppy, I would argue that this is very clearly on purpose, and our killer is yet again toying with the police. Think about it. She was injected and tied up. The painting wasn't left at the scene until after the police took her away and came back. These are calculated moves, not disorganized mistakes. From this witness, we found out that he gives, at least in this one instance, drugs to his victims via injections. I'm the cool guy with the drugs around here. Using this information, I would advise that the human investigators test the other bodies for foreign substances. We also haven't found Jack Stryker, so that brings total missing slash rumored body count up to seven. For a total rumored body count of around 17. I don't, I don't know, it's at least close to 17. I actually don't know how to count above 15. Still missing thus far are Lisa's secret face, Hanging Jimmy, Jennifer's last stare, Bremblow's prolapse, Scream Maggie's scream, Sean, aka the man in the pipes. Oh wait, you, yeah, we just found the arm. That arm from Waxdoll Tom. I just realized mid-recording, we found the arm. That's one of the lady's arms. So we're still missing one arm, but we found the arm. Editing human slave here, totally not tied up in some dark room. I'm not sure the timeline adds up, but you know. Found an arm. And half of Corey and half of Margaret Beck, which I'm just gonna count as one. Is that f***ed up? I mean, I'm not gonna start drawing lines now. It's a bit late for that. Also, it's two total when you factor in the addition of the other one made out of their other halves, so it's just easier this way. If you had any shadow of a doubt about who this guy is, you were an idiot in the first place but now even more so. This killer has been identified by the same physical characteristics every time without fail. Massive black pits of pupils filled with a crazed dark energy, a vacant, somehow threatening stare, stringy dark hair, and sharp, jagged, emotionless features. Our killer is still somewhere out there, doing things like taking pictures of Tina's severed feet, angling it so that they don't look cut off to sell to perverts on the internet. Absolutely devious. As for the strange message that I hinted this killer might be trying to show through his crimes in the last video, I believe that leaving a witness alive in this strange and nauseating fashion suggests there's more to this than just murder for murder's sake. If he's able to evade law enforcement this effectively, our killer is not an idiot. If he was just killing to kill, he would cover his tracks as best as possible. But he doesn't. 
No, he wants the opposite. He draws attention to his crimes. He wants people to see this, but why? I feel like the answer is right in front of me, but I just can't see it. As for what he's trying to say, I'm still drawing a blank. If you have theories, put them in the comments below to help solve this, because I'm very likely just stupid. Although, I feel I can say with 100% certainty now that he wants as much attention on his atrocities as possible. And careful planning of his crime suggests that it's for a deeper meaning rather than inflating a sick ego. This is all I can really gauge thus far, and we may have to wait for more information before this is solvable. If you like this video and want us to come back and check out the rest of this fantastic analog horror series, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with all notifications enabled, or maybe you'll get a new nice portrait of yourself and no feet or hands. Go watch my first one about this if you didn't already. And also Urban Spook's whole series. I want to shout out Urban Spook for making this great piece of media and being so cool when I hit him up. Shout out the inner circle. Love y'all. Okay, bye. <laughs>